Hey everyone, Ben here and welcome back to the channel. We are here for the new season of Low Fuel Motorsport on Assetto Corsa Competizione and we're at Catalunya for round one of this new season. Unfortunately, the new year has not brought new qualifying form for us. We are starting in 17th of a grid of 19 cars here, this time in the Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo. Uh, we're in split two, so the standard is reasonably high, uh, but I was a little bit disappointed in qualifying. Hopefully, we're going to be able to make up some of those spots in the race. And without further ado, let's get down to the grid to see if we can. Here we go then, green light straight away and we are underway here at Barcelona. We're going to have to just try and keep it neat and tidy into T1 here because we're right at the back of the grid. Anything can happen up ahead of us uh, which might cause us to have to take averting action. We're coming slightly into the middle of the track here because the guy up ahead has taken a very narrow line. We're going to try and get around his outside. I've got one car to the outside of a slight bit of contact there but nothing too severe. We're coming through into the second part of the corner and we get a big tag from behind and we are round and that is a disastrous start to this new season. We caught the barrier as well with our rear wing. We've got some light damage. Thankfully we are pointing in the right direction and we're able to get going pretty quickly and we're going to have to because we have to get back on the uh, pack of cars up ahead if we're going to have any chance of salvaging anything from this race. Maya up ahead in the Lamborghini also came to grief in that T1, T2 complex but what a disaster this early in the race. I can't believe it. I thought I was clear on my inside but it just looked like uh, the BMW behind us stuck his nose uh, alongside our rear tyre but we'll take a proper look at that when we get the chance uh, in the next few moments but for now we've got to get our head down we've got to get back on the back of the pack in order to try and salvage something here as oh big contact with the uh, the bollard on the left hand side there from somebody up ahead we're going to come into the heavy braking zone then yellow flags out so something's happened up ahead we might get an opportunity here there's cars off to the left oh my goodness there's one all the way around and we have to take avoiding action we get another squeeze as we come back on the track bmw off to the left hand side it's all kicked off there into the tight left hander at the end of the back straight and we're up into 16th position we did very well and in fairness got pretty lucky uh, not to get caught up worse in that incident. All sorts of things had kicked off up ahead of us there. We'll take again another proper look at that once we've got some time to breathe. But we're coming on to the start finish straight for the first time. We've got into the slipstream of the BMW up ahead. He's carrying visible damage, so I guess he was involved in that big incident. He signals with his indicator for us to go to the right hand side. He's not going to fight us. We're going to just get on the brakes slightly earlier because we've got a tighter apex to take. We managed to get the car through. And thankfully for us at least, the damage, if, even if it is affecting our top speed, doesn't feel like it's affecting the performance of the car through the corners. Here we are then, that T1 episode, and yes, you'll see the bright green BMW just tags us from behind as the Lamborghini is already into the gravel trap. Here's another view of it. We do come together just slightly there, but I feel like I'm clear of him. And then he just rolls the car into our rear end. And unfortunately, that is us into the tyre barrier. Not a big incident, but enough, unfortunately, uh, to wreck our opening lap. And then we fast forward to the middle of the lap and, oh, it's a different BMW this time. Just gets it all wrong into the tight corner and causes mayhem. I believe a Porsche might have gone round completely unassisted uh, up ahead as well, uh, which didn't help matters. And then there's another bit of contact and the BMW that we came into contact with in T1 uh, goes round once again. We rejoin the race then, we're in 15th position, five minutes gone, and we are managing to keep pace with uh, the McLaren, the Ferrari, and the BMW up ahead. But it's been a really tough battle just to keep pace with them. It looks like the Ferrari of Esch is the one that is holding up the two cars up ahead and allowing us to stay in contact with them. So got to regather at this point it hasn't been the ideal opening to the race but as luck would have it we're still well within a shout of finishing higher than we qualified in this race and given how poor we were in qualifying that is pretty well all I'm aiming for here to get through the rest of this race cleanly and any extra positions we can find will definitely be a bonus and as I say on race pace at least although there has been a bit of fighting up ahead which is keeping uh, this bunch of cars closer together it does look like we've got 
uh, enough to compete at least with some of those drivers further up the field at the moment. As I say that, it looks like one in 13th position is having a go here on Esch. They're alongside one another as they come into the right-hander, but look at that. The McLaren has gone wide. He's out onto the gravel. That is going to give us the chance to just skip past on the inside as well, and we're up into 14th position. So another place banked as we come through the left-hander then, uh, and unfortunately one who had the pace, I think, for sure on Esch, uh, just couldn't get the car slowed down into the right-hander. There might have been contact. We'll take a look at that when we can. Uh, but all that I know is he went out onto the gravel. We were able uh, to sneak past as well, and that has given us another position in this race. And prior now in uh, the BMW up ahead is surely going to have a go at Esch. As we come into the heavy braking zone, he might try right now, in fact. Going to get around the outside, is he? That's going to be a very difficult move to execute. In fact, all that happens is they both run wide, and that has given us an advantage on the exit of the corner. As we now get through this very tricky corner, I'm taking it in first gear. I'm not sure that that's necessarily the best uh, way to take the corner but I find it helps me get the car rotated down into second gear here through the right hand and then again down again gear into first try and hook up the line there really is only one line through that set of corners the cars feel so cumbersome as you try to thread them between the curbs I really have not mastered that part of the lap at all it is very tricky indeed we finish another lap then. We've nevertheless set our personal fastest lap of the race so far. We're still in the 147s. I know I've got lap times at least uh, without damage and in clear air in the 146s. So I've got to keep trying to turn the pace up here and put pressure on Pryor and Esch up ahead because they're running 13th and 12th place in this race. So these are good positions for us to be fighting for uh, here on the opening race. At low fuel motorsport season five up ahead there's going to be more action here and actually they've come together big bang of doors as we come into the right hand at exactly the same corner that we gained a spot on the last lap and we are going to take advantage of that and sneak past the ferrari of esch and then close off the move down into the left hander just making sure that he had no incentive to try and stick one straight down the inside to get that position back so two laps two positions gained without really having to do too much ourselves other than stay in touch here's the first incident with one down the inside of esh he just gets his braking wrong there is a slight bit of contact that's enough to unsettle the car and put it out onto the gravel and he loses three positions rather than gaining one and then on the very next lap of the race we're going to see Pryor dive down the inside big bit of contact there as Esch was in no mood to give up the position and we managed to sneak past then on the inside thankfully for Esch he doesn't go out onto the gravel as one did on the previous lap before and we are able then to close off that move down into the left hander. We rejoin then a good number of laps later. We have got our pace down into the 146s. A 146.5 uh, was our last lap time. Unfortunately, prior in clearer air is streaking away from us. So there's a two second gap now up ahead. One has managed to get onto our rear wing. He's less than half a second behind us at this point of the race. We're running in 13th as things stand. Uh, and we've got just over uh, 10 minutes left to go before the checkered flag one car though is off to the left hand side who's that it looks like it's Meyer perhaps an incident maybe he's ran out of fuel either way it's another free position for us we'll be then bumped up into 12th position in this race now I remind you we have not had a top 10 finish at all in our low fuel motorsport career so far in the few races we did at the end of last season we did not manage to achieve uh, a top 10 finish so I'm really keen to as early as we can in the season to get ourselves up into the top 10. I didn't think it was going to be this race given our poor qualifying, but we've got an outside chance of doing it. As if you look in our rear wing, uh, rear view mirror, it looks like one has managed to put it round in the corner there to the right, the right hand corner. Very tricky, high speed. He's lost the back end, and that is going to give us a little bit of breathing space behind to Lishka, who is in that damaged BMW, and he's a good five seconds behind us at this point of the race. So that's taken the pressure off from behind, and we can now just focus on setting the best times that we can uh, through the closing stages of this race. I'm not sure we've got the pace on prior. We're still setting 
uh, fastest laps of the race for ourselves but he's pulled out another 0.7 of a second in this lap alone and then we've got Vastador and Stadelbauer up ahead uh, in 10th and 9th so it might very well be the case that a top 10 finish is just not up for grabs in this race unless there are other incidents up ahead of us but if we can bring home 12th position given that terrible start to the race after a very poor qualifying as well then that I think will represent a pretty good result in this season opener. We found more time through T1 and T2 on this latest lap. We're a quarter of a second up uh, on our best lap, lap to date as we're trying to consolidate then 12th position and we run through the right-hander where we've actually had a good amount of luck in this race so far. We've actually lost a bit of that time though as we come through that corner. While we've got a little bit of breathing space in this race, why are we racing in the Ferrari GT3 Evo? Well, it's because for the very first time, I'm planning to run an endurance race in February 2022. Uh, and I'm teaming up with my SCB buddy, Chris Rogers from Chris Rogers Sim Racing. Check out his channel, there's a link in the description, as well as another SCB community member, Jason Spooner, to run the nine hours of Spa. Uh, an endurance race hosted by RWB. It's going to be a completely different challenge to one I've ever taken on. I'm going to be providing plenty of coverage of the run-up to that race as well as streaming uh, the nine hours themselves uh, when we get to race day. In the meantime, we've got a yellow flag out, so I'm going to have to cut that bit short as we're coming through the final section of the lap. And there's cars around here. Look at that. There's one there off to the left-hand side. I think there was another off to the right-hand side. Clearly contact between a couple of cars at least. And that has promoted us up into the top 10 of this race against all the odds. We nearly run it wide ourselves. What on earth went on there? Let's take a look at the replay. Oh, and look at that. He's just lost it. Through the right-hander and there's no chance then of the car coming through behind him to avoid the stricken motor in the middle of the track we then sneak past and you can see the damage done to the two cars behind here's the viewpoint then of the second car as he's just got no chance of avoiding the stricken uh, car stranded in the middle of the circuit and that has gifted us another couple of positions and thankfully for us that was the way that things stayed one more car ended up uh, falling foul of under fueling themselves for the race and had to take a last minute pit stop for a splash and dash stop so we then got promoted up into ninth place in this race we rejoined on the very final lap of the race our fuel level is critical as well well, so I've got to be a little bit careful and I am easing off just a little bit. Sturzer, who was one of those two cars who got involved in the incident there in the third sector of the lap about five, six minutes ago. He's been about two seconds behind us now. He's closing in on our rear wing, but to be honest, I'm no longer pushing. I just want to bring the car home. Prior up ahead has stretched the gap to seven seconds, so there's not really much more for us to gain in this race. I just want to consolidate in ninth place, bring the car home for what will be our best result in LFM so far. And who would have imagined that after T1 uh, and being facing in the wrong direction in the barrier, we've managed to pull it back, fight back, and get ourselves up into the top 10. The leaders finished the race, the fireworks are going off to the side of the track. Sturzer behind us is going to finish probably within a second, but to be truthful, I'm not interested in that whatsoever as we come across the start-finish line to finish in a brilliant ninth position really really happy with that and just brilliant fun great to be back on the lfm servers really really keen to see this season through and get into as many of these races as we can here's the full classified results then we finish 29 seconds off the leader so we've got plenty of pace to find but we're in the second split you can see there that our car number was 18 so we finished very well given our yellow rating at the moment I hope you've enjoyed the race. If you have, leave a like, get subscribed, check out the channel in the future for more LFM races as well as the build-up to the RWB 9 Hours of Spa Endurance Race. Going to be covering it in all sorts of ways as well as on race day. It would be great to get you involved as we do and I will see you on the next one.